Hello, this is Haley McLaughlin with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Carmen Rubio, running for City Commissioner, Position 1. Welcome, Carmen. Hi there. Hi. Carmen, please tell us a little bit about yourself why you're running for this office, and what unique characteristics you have among all candidates for this office. Sure, thank you. So I grew up in a hardworking Mexican family um, in Oregon that instilled really strong values of taking care of each other and respect for hard work. And these were the things that inspired me to work in public policy for local progressive leaders and eventually to run one of the leading Latino community-based nonprofits in Oregon and where we serve more than 7,800 youth and families every year. And early in my career as a policy staffer um, when I was young, I saw firsthand the difference that it made for everyday people and the historically marginalized um, and those who don't have a voice to feel truly represented um, by their elected officials. Um, I happened to work for um, Commissioner Serena Cruz. She was the first uh, Latina ever elected um, to Multnomah County Board of Commissioners. And I saw what it meant to people to feel like they had access to local government through her candidacy and through her elected office. People deserve to be treated with dignity, uh, to be heard and to not feel dismissed because of who they are, where they live, um, or what language they speak. And so I'm running because I believe that communities in every part of our city deserve equity and should have a voice on city council, not just those who can afford access or have access to power. And honestly, in these, in, in, in these uncertain times, we need leaders with experience who can hit the ground running. And as a nonprofit leader of a growing organization, I've managed and led large scale projects, overseen multi-million dollar budgets and understood the importance of collaborative leadership and the difference that, that makes in the workplace. Um, and I'm the best choice for voters because I can hit the ground running right now. Um, and I am an experienced manager, collaborator, and I have a strong grounding in my community. Thank you. With the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small, small business, city employee layoffs and housing displacement will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Well, first, I, I believe that the city uh, and especially Mayor Wheeler, have, they've done all the right things in pushing for a statewide stay at home order. I'm also really greatly appreciative of all our first responders in all professions and especially health care workers at this time. Um, and I also want to acknowledge the thousands of unacknowledged farm industry workers uh, picking vegetables and processing meat so that we can have groceries. And these jobs are long, they're hard hours, they're for low wages and often without health care benefits. And these, this is the latest industry that we're hearing on the news that is hit by COVID-19. Um, so right now, to me, our local and state government are focused on how to support workers and small businesses through unemployment grants and loans, and that, that's what they should be doing. Next, we need to assess the revenue hit to government programs and services. And the next state forecast, I think, is coming in May. And so I hope that that will shed some light um, on what our work is. And once we know exactly what we're looking at, the current council can get to work on planning. And something that is really important, I think, to say, too, is that this pandemic is crystallizing for us um, the tremendous racial and economic disparities that that are coming to the fore and that exist in our community and across the country. We're seeing that in the disproportionate amount of communities of color hit by this virus. And we're also seeing the potential, these potential people that are hardest hit to be the ones making the lowest wages. They've lost their jobs, lack health care, um, affordable housing, and they suffer from food insecurity. So our community is suffering and this is where the work of the city is. Um, ensuring we provide fire life safety supports that we can count on and planning for recovery and providing relief for business owners where we can, um, the unemployed, low-income families and workers who are, in who are um, ineligible for unemployment and in insurance right now as well, and renters and those that are at high risk. Um, and I think we need to just remember as a city, we're only as strong as we are as our most vulnerable members are cared for and strengthened. And I think that our leaders at city council do recognize this. Thank you. If we maintain our current government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? Um, was, is that plural or is that just one city bureau? <laughs> 
I'll let you answer however you'd like. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm obviously one of my um, main interests is addressing our affordable housing challenges and our houseless um, challenges uh, for, for the chronically homeless. Um, I'm a big supporter of the effort underway to bring more resources into our city so that we can address um, long-term needs around permanent supportive housing for our most vulnerable. So I would love to uh, be able to be assigned the Housing Bureau for those reasons. I'm also very interested as someone who works with low-income families and who um, helps to um, disperse rent assistance every month. I see the need in there. Um, I also understand um, from the community side the urgency that exists. So I would love to bring that urgency and um, my own lived experience as someone who's lived on that side uh, of these uh, challenges and also um, as someone who's worked in the community for the last 10 years. Um, I've also, I would also love to see parks and, and recreation. Um, I believe it's one of the most incredible resources that our city has um, and that there's a lot of opportunity there right now and challenge uh, to hold on to this precious resource but i think that i have some ideas about how to make that also more accessible to more low-income families and then finally water um, as our climate um, goals are before us and we want to make progress i believe that water justice is increasingly begin going to become an issue for our community so that's something i'm interested in delving into as well and in terms of liaison responsibilities, I would love to be the arts and culture liaison, as well as um, liaison to the Portland Children's Levy. Thank you. How would you address the public's significant concerns about police community relations, use of deadly force and officer accountability? Mm -hmm. So what I would say about that is city council really needs to lead the way on this with a united voice. Um, this means that we need to continually train officers to correct for their own implicit racial biases and practices and to be reflective about areas of growth that, they, that, that are needed. We need less militariz militarization of policing. Sorry, I always get stuck on that word. Um, and more community-centered focus, hiring peacekeepers who are armed with non-lethal tools. Um, we also, uh, need, there's been discussion about updating the psychological evaluation and hiring processes to ensure that we're hiring and bringing in uh, individuals with the mindset that black people and people of color are valued community members and, are prob and, and that also these, that we're recruiting for problem solvers and help the vulnerable navigate towards systems of care that they need to stay safe. We also, I uh, would need to make sure that we're recruiting um, and hiring to truly reflect the diversity of backgrounds that represent who Portland is today. Um, and I think that that will become increasingly um, evident that we're doing the right things um, when we're seeing a more reflective workforce, when we're seeing uh, officers that look like us, speak our languages, and are from our communities. Um, these are things that would be indicative of, I believe, culture change. Also, uh, we need to be uh, uh, a city that uses data regularly, that we have transparency of data so that we can see what, what disparities exist and that there is, um, the data is on the table and that should be um, something that helps drive our decisions and shows our progress and shows the areas where we're not making progress and that need attention. Um, I also think that we should think about expanding the independence and diversity of the independent, independent review for accountability and lift up, lift up victim and community experiences through the use of restorative justice practices. So I think all these in combination um, are good starters and will help us show progress that we're becoming a more modern, more reflective and inclusive community-centered um, police force for the city of Portland. Thank you, Carmen. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.